Manchester United have an absolutely unbelievable player on their hands, in their hands, in Kobe Maino. He is brilliant. He can do it all. And he got a lot of hype coming into the season. And that's because of how good he was in the academy, how good he was in pre-season and how he has these traits that only elite players have that Man United are crying out for. But he came in versus Liverpool, Newcastle, Everton, and it was phenomenal. He's been brilliant in every game he's played for United. And the mad thing is he's 18 and he's running the show in numerous games. And what made me proud to be a United fan today was that in the, every single match squad for the last 86 years, Manchester United have included at least one homegrown player. And today there was two players that ran the show today, and that was Garnacho and Kobe Maynard, the two best players on the pitch. 18, 19 years of age, coming from the academy. The maturity that they showed, their technical ability, their reading of the game, shows up some of the first-team players. I thought Johnny Evans had a good game. I thought Deleuze had a good game. But if you don't rate Kobe Maino, I, I, I don't know how you watch football. He is a class above everybody on the pitch whenever he plays. His on-the-ball abilities are really impressive, and that's what made him a level above everyone in the club, in, in the squad, the ability to just take some touches, move the ball so calmly, so composed, play those quick one-twos, the way he would always make himself available to receive the ball. Then he would use that sort of body turn and scan the area, play the ball forward. Every time he got the ball, you could have three players at him and he would use his feet to get out these tight scenarios. And then he would play the ball forward and he picked out some brilliant passes and his composure and maturity to just keep the ball at his feet was great. His ability and build up, his IQ is great. But what was so brilliant today was him off of the ball. He was unbelievable. He's not a natural six. He's an eight and he's playing as a six on his own because he's got no help from McTominay, no help from Bruno. And he's doing a phenomenal job. He was a metronome. Um, I think Ethan Talks called him a metronome and described it really well. So efficient in his the way he was winning all of his duels. He was there. Every time we lost the ball from our awful corners, Eric Ramsey needs to be sacked. Oh, the set pieces. Oh, we don't even get into that. But he was always there to pick up the ball. I think he made eight tackles today. He was phenomenal. In fact, I've got his game numbers here. I'm going to get them up on the screen. Look at this statistic here. Uh, this statistic here. Wow. Wow. I mean, uh, yes, it's only Wigan, but we've got to remember that Kobe Maino has basically been unbelievable in basically every game he's played this season for United. So, yes, it is only Wigan. And you'd expect Man United to be a little bit better today against Wigan. We probably should have had four goals. We should have taken our chances. But Tomane wasn't good. Hoyle wasn't good. But we look at Kobe Maino, one key pass, two out of three accurate long passes, and his long passes were fantastic. 90% pass accuracy, 70% ground rules won, one clearance, one blocked, eight tackles to make, eight tackles today. Had an absolutely phenomenal game, picking out the right passes, picking out the right tackles. He did it all. To add a bit more context here, eight out of eight tackles, two out of two dribbles, and also the fact that he had 86 touches when McTominay had about 20 touches. I think Muttomane had 30 something touches in the end, but people don't realise he gets no support from Muttomane. Bruno was quite good in the first half, but didn't do much in the second half. He does it on his own out of position. The way that he is 18 and he st strolled through the midfield like a season pro is special. Not many players can do that. His maturity, the fact that he looks the most experienced and composed player on the pitch whenever he plays. He's, he's a, honestly, I, I have to say this, he's, he's one of those one in a million players. You know how Bellingham coming through was a one in a million player and people were saying, look, it's Wigan, and you're hyping him up. But he has something about him that 0.001% players have. He's one of those one in a million players because to be 18 and be that mature, to be that composed, if he stays fit, he has absolute elite level potential. He has the highest ceiling out of everyone in the academy and the United squad right now. His ceiling is the highest. He's the one player that Man City was trying to sign in the summer. That says a lot. His I can't explain, and this it sounds like me overhyping because it's Wigan, but I can't explain how good this guy could be. I've been talking about Kobe Mena for years, even when he was in the academy. He has those absolute technical abilities that Pep Guardiola would be screaming for right now. Did you see the touch where he took it down and played it over his head? He was absolutely brilliant. And I could be here all day talking about Kobe Mena, but I do want to talk about Garnacho. I thought Garnacho was very dangerous today down that right-hand side, constantly trying to cause problems, constantly trying to make things happen. I think Garnacho on the right-hand side has done more in two games. He's only ever played two games. He never even played in his youth days on the right-hand side, but Garnacho has done more in two, day, two games on the right-hand side than Anthony has all season. Garnacho 
was absolutely phenomenal, particularly in that first half. He put in a fantastic cross to Hoyland that maybe he should have put away. He cut in, had a shot on his weak foot that hit the bar and was unlucky not to score. He's been looking really, really good on the right-hand side, refreshing, looking a lot better than Rashford. Ganacho's decision-making, I think, is a lot better than he gets credit for. His maturity, his ability to make runs, defend, make things happen. I'm really liking Garnacho right wing because he's so direct. He's got that pace, but he takes on players. He doesn't kill our attack. What frustrated me about Rashford today was he's holding the ball for too long while Delode made this overlapping run and then Delode was marked by then. Anthony takes 50 touches to get past his man. Garnacho just gets the ball and goes. He doesn't hold on for it too long. He's direct. He can get the ball from outside the box to in. And that's what I absolutely love about Garnacho. He had a fantastic game um, yet again. And I think he's been so good lately and he deserves to be playing. Look at this. 88% pass accuracy, 61 touches, 36 out of 41 passes completed, three, three key passes, three goundrels, two jibbles, two big chances created, should have had an assist, unlucky not to get a goal, he was absolute level today, and I have to say, Garnacho on the right, Rashford on the left wing, that's our best wing pairing, 100%, I don't think, Rashford had a very good first half, Rashford went back to his old self in the second half, and was horrid, um, but that is our best wing pairing, that is our best front three, yes, it was frustrating that we didn't score, but that is our best front three, but I want to talk about something that I picked out as particularly frustrating, and I tweeted about this, and this is McTominay, and I know I always talk about McTominay, and it does feel like we've got an agenda, and it's, but it is McTominay, again, being the worst player on the pitch, there was a point where I got why Ten Uncle started at McTominay because he'd scored goals. But then he had a bad game. Then he had another bad game. Then he had another bad game. Then another bad game. And there's nothing to justify him playing other than the fact today that actually he had to play because we didn't have any fit midfielders other than Nejri that is leaving. It's a shame Dan Gore wasn't around because I would have rather seen him. But I said this. It felt like McTominay today was getting in Hoyland's way in his box crashing 10 role. Not only does he add nothing to the midfield, but it's taking up the same area as Hoyland. He is and not even converting his chances, which is why he started playing in the first place. It feels like McTominay's role just makes it more difficult for Hoyland than the field. Luckily, Kobe Mayno seems to be able to do it all, but I can't wait for Casimir Mount to be back, is what I said, because McTominay, when he scores, when, he, when McTominay could have had four goals today, if McTominay had four goals today, we'd be saying fair, fair play. But when McTominay doesn't score, you see how bad he is. Even in the performances that McTominay scored and was given man in the match, he was like that today. It was like he was today, but he scored those chances. He had four chances, they didn't score any of them. In other games, he's had those many chances and he's put two away. So we say it's a good game. But if he doesn't put those two away, you wouldn't say it's a good game. Because while he does nothing all game and then all of a sudden gets four chances in 90 minutes the most of everyone else and gets on the ball the most in the most dangerous areas, if he's not putting those chances away, there's nothing he does. And does he put those chances away consistently enough and for us to keep playing him in this role? Does he add enough for us to be playing in this role? No. Because one thing I noticed particularly today was there was a time where the ball probably would have fallen to Hoyland twice, but McTominay gets in the way, gets in front of him. And you can say, well, that's Hoyland waiting, not running to the ball. McTominay finds the ball, McTominay's movement's better. You can say that, but that is because centre-backs are naturally prone to mark the striker. It's harder to mark a box-crashing midfielder. But this box-crashing midfielder role wasn't working for me because it's making it more difficult for the midfield. There's no balance. Luckily, Kobe Mania can do it all. But he's also getting in the same areas of Hoyland. The him and, if McTominay's going to continue this role... Him, Ten Hag and Hoyland need to have discussions so they're taking up different areas because every time McTominay's running in the box, he's going into where Hoyland would have received the ball. They need to, like, they're, they're almost running on top of each other and they're getting each other's way. I don't think it works. I don't think it helps Hoyland, who didn't have a good game today and should have had a goal, should have had maybe two. Uh, maybe he's not used to getting serves, but... And I'm not going to give Hoyland a stick because he's 20 years of age and we were meant to bring him an experienced striker, but I, I, I get why he had to play McTominay today. I understand why McTominay played but I'm just not a big fan. I want to praise Johnny Evans for being absolutely fantastic for Manchester United. Yet again, done more than Lindelof this season. has been very, very good for United. Rashford, I think, was just a bit frustrating today. Had a good first half. I thought Bruno Fernandes had a good first half. I will say everyone's crying about Bruno diving, Bruno being a cheat. There was contact. It was a penalty. It's a soft penalty, but it's a penalty. Did you see the Jota one that Jota got for, was it versus Newcastle? If that wasn't Bruno Fernandes and that was, I don't know, let someone a bit more likeable um, that rivals would like more. I don't know if that was a, a, a Johnny Evans. No one would be crying that that's a United penalty. They just say it's soft. Because it's Bruno Fernandes, people are making a big deal calling the cheat about United getting a penalty because it's Bruno Fernandes. I don't know why it's getting so much coverage. This is the problem with United. Bruno gets a soft penalty, it gets covered. How many soft penalties has every other club had this season? Many. How many times have Man United not been given blatant penalties? There's so many times we've not been given blatant penalties, no coverage. The Jota dive, you know, versus Newcastle was 10 times worse than this. Where is the coverage? 
all of a sudden they're all covering and talking about Bruno's dive. This whole all United get soft penalties agenda. We never do. So as soon as we do, they go on about it. But we've seen so many clubs get other soft penalties tonight. Maino completed 10 out of 13 ground duels and won eight out of eight tackles tonight, which just shows how good he is on the ball. And ugh, Kobe Maino is a special guy. Special guy. Glad Forson got his debut and got on the pitch as well. But the media um, must despise Bruno Fernandes because the outrage when there's actually contact, you say it's a dive. Do you know what I mean? 100%. Um, people saying, send. oh my God, I've just seen people on Twitter saying Kobe Maino's got to go to the Euros. I remember people tweeting a few a few weeks ago, Maino's not ready, Maino's not ready. Maino is unbelievable. Smash a like, smash a subscribe. I don't want to, I would just be sitting here talking about Maino for ages. See you next time. Bye.